Hi, Bernardo Moya here, Chief Inspirational Officer of The Best You, founder of The Best You, and I, I'm basically delighted to be speaking to Smita today. Um, we have our event coming up in very, very shortly, in a week's time, and we're just really trying to connect with as many great people as possible. So for those of you that have, didn't, have never heard of me, well, yes, as I said, I'm the founder of The Best You, and we've got this big event happening. It's 180 speakers, around 150 exhibitors. It's our third event. We're expecting anything between 10, 8 to 12,000 people. So we shall see what's going to happen, but it's going to be a fantastic weekend of learnings. And uh, today I've got with me Smita, Smita Joshi, who spoke at uh, my event in the past, and we're delighted to have her back. So Smita, tell me a little bit about yourself, who you are, so we can share it with the tribe, and then we can talk a little bit more later about what you're going to be doing at the event. Hi, Bernardo. Oh, this is amazing. It's so good to talk to you. Um, I want to say last year I spoke at The Best You. I'll tell you a little bit about myself, but I just want to say last year I spoke at The Best You. I did a, a taster session, a 45-minute um, session, and it was just amazing. I really, really enjoyed it. The people um, that were there, I mean, they were so into, you know, so so kind of enrolled into the whole the whole thing it was a really fabulous event so um, i'm looking forward this year to doing three sessions two of them are 45 minutes which is uh, you know really great and one of them is uh, 20 minutes the first session is called unlock your power to thrive and i'm going to teach four techniques in 45 minutes that has people be able to literally get present really get very swiftly present and restore a loss of power if that's what they're experiencing so that they can get on with whatever they want to create in their lives. So, and, and then of course I'm, I do longer sessions of that um, elsewhere, but this is just a 45 minutes for four techniques. People will get value from that. Second session is called invoke your goddess within. And I want to explore the sacred feminine. What does it, what does it feel like for especially women to, tap in. What is a goddess? Then I'm going to explore what is a goddess. And then um, I'm going to lead them through their own place within themselves that they can connect with and tap into. And usually when I do this session with people, they are left with tears in their eyes because they get really present to who they are. And the third one is just 20 minutes. And I'm going to share just one technique that I learned from an amazing teacher in New Mexico many years ago. And I write about that in, in my, in my third, uh, second book, um, the Karma and Diamonds Trilogy. And it's, a, it's called Clear Your Karma, Free Your Future. But I'm going to take just one technique in 20 minutes. And I'm going to share that with people so that they can take one aspect of their life and really get, get um, complete as in like clear some sticky stuff that is holding them back in a relationship or, or an aspect, some other area of their life. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Amazing, amazing. You're gonna be very busy, very busy. You were very busy last year, well, well done. Uh, a couple of workshops and a 20 minute one. So the Empowering Women this year, I've got to say, it's the first year we've done it and it has been absolutely, it's been a blessing. You know, uh, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of obviously women coming forward and standing out and showing us men how it's done because you've got so much more you know, so many more great things to share than we have. Uh, but, you know, the Empowering Women uh, room, and I was, I'll share later when, when we look at all the speakers we've got. But I would say probably around 65, 70% of the people that are speaking are women. Uh, so, yeah, very interesting. So, good for you. Looking mm -hmm. forward to it. It'll be a great success like it was last year. You're good, good energy. Thank you. Thank you. And um, regarding your, um, the question that you actually asked, which is, you know, uh, tell me a little bit about uh, yourself. The question about that. Um, what I'd say is that, you know, I've got this really unusual background in that um, I have spent 25 years in corporations. So my experience has been in winning business internationally in mostly leading edge technology. So when I started out, the leading edge technology was the, the brick phone that Vodafone had. And as far back as that, okay, we were taking that into corporates and then, then bringing in, um, you know, um, communication lines where you could actually make calls uh, on VOIP from the car and stuff like that. But then, then moving into um, um, systems, which 
lined up calls and recorded calls and queued calls and stuff like that. They were really leading edge at one point. And then actually I was one of the first people to get into Indian IT. So um, I happened to be on a sabbatical in India and there were like these little articles in the main newspapers. And then, you know, when I, when I would pick up a newspaper, there was something about the software industry that was about to spring up. And I thought, that's where I really want to be. So I, I found a way of getting into that. And um, that ended up being 15 years of my career. And the largest deal that I, um, that I worked on with my team was $1 billion in a consortium. And actually, our consortium ended up actually winning that, um, that deal. So, you know, so anything in between. So like tens of millions to hundreds of millions to, that was the, kind of like the largest. And so um, while I was doing all these things, what happened was I found that there was this other side of me that really needed expression. So as a young person starting out in a very male dominated environment, um, I found that the, that, you know, there was something odd because I started really, I, I understood that psyche really well, the male psyche, but you know, um, I started to behave a little bit like that and I found something was really missing. So one of the first things that I did was realize that actually, you know, if I was going to succeed in this area, I really had to be true to myself and I had to bring the whole of myself into the, into the equation. So I had to reclaim that feminine aspect and find a way of somehow becoming very integrated, even though I was in a male dominated environment. So, so that was kind of where my journey began. And then I realized that actually there was, was kind of manic, the, the work I was doing internationally, etc. cetera, um, demanding, very, very results oriented. It was great. I loved it. Um, but there was something that I needed else that I need that was calling me. That was who am I? And so I started to meditate at home and amazing things started to happen. And that's where my journey began. So alongside of all of that, I learned to meditate. And then later on, I, I, I started to um, learn to lead. So I got into personal development um, with an organization called Landmark Education. And I loved that. I just loved the, the journey of, uh, you know, of understanding the design of being human. So I started to, um, I trained to lead the seminars alongside of my, my day job. And yeah, it was, was full on, but I really, really loved it. So I, I learned to lead programs, coach in large groups, like groups of up to 300 people at a time. And um, I realized that it was as much an expression for me as, um, you know, working um, the entrepreneurial side, you know, and the business side. So, and then I ended up writing three books because that was something that was really calling to be done. So I ended up writing a trilogy and that's um, what, what I'm bringing to the best you where I'll be at, at stand A34 if anyone wants to come and say hello um, with the books and everything. And um, yeah, uh, so, you know, like an all rounded kind of a, a mini bio there. Well, listen, thank you so much. I mean, we, we, we love, um, you know, we, we love putting these events together because it gives the opportunity to those that have some amazing expertise and some great, you know, ideas and tips to share like yourself uh, and an opportunity for those that are seeking, looking for kind of like, you know, inspiration to, to meet. And I, I, I've been saying this obviously to anyone, everyone I've spoken to related to the event, that there's nothing like being at a live event. There's nothing like a connecting, speaking face-to-face uh, with people. And I know like yourself, you know, you've been involved in seminars for many years. You know, we get a lot, we love that buzz, don't we, of, of, of being there and have the opportunity. I mean, you know, kind of, uh, I, I was in, I was in, in California last week and, and someone asked me, uh, Bernardo, why do you do this? And, and she, you know, we just, we just met. So she didn't get my sense of humor plus, you know, uh, and uh, I remember I said, we said, what do you do these events? I said, you know what? I don't know. And she said, okay, okay, okay. We got to work on that. You know, <laughs> He actually took me seriously. And I said, well, no, no, hold on. I said, I do know. I'm just joking. I said, look, I don't know why I do it because it's a ridiculous amount of work to put these events together and organizing it and the logistics and, and you know, kind of like dealing with 150 speakers and exhibitors and main stage and, and asking them, everyone, please, please market the event. Please push the event. So um, we're exhausted. I mean, you know, I've been literally working 16, eight, 16 hours for like seven, eight weeks now, and we've still got another week to do. And then obviously, because I, I'm, I'm masochistic, I want to do another one in Long Beach five weeks later. So kind of like, it's madness. But why we do it is because, I, and this is what I was coming to, is we, we do it because we love it. You know, there, there's nothing like 
the experience of putting an event and then walking around the halls and saying hi to people and engaging with people and, and having that connection. There's nothing like that. And, and I know a lot of people are into online webinars, reading books, audio books and stuff like that, but there's nothing like live and connecting. That's true. No, it's really, really true. I think the, the buzz of being in front of people, um, making a difference is just really, really profound. You know, but the thing that interests me about you is that you have um, an organization that is totally, absolutely devoted to personal development. And that's not, that's quite uncommon. That's the thing that really interests me about you. And I said to you, I'd really love to have you on my, on my channel, on my YouTube channel, because I'm interviewing social entrepreneurs, as it were. I don't know whether you'd class yourself as one of those, but um, you know, what I am really curious about, what had you set up in that space specifically? What was your background? Uh yeah, I mean, uh, many times I think I'm a social entrepreneur. There's a lot of people expect us to do everything uh, as, as an NGO, you know. But look, I mean, uh, our hearts are in the right place. Everyone wants everything for nothing, you know, and everyone expects me to put this massive organization that we built at their disposal. But no, look, I mean, you know, kind of we, we do it because we, we love it. We're very passionate about it. And, and ultimately, I think that, you know, we need to join forces. People that are in the business of leading and helping and inspiring others, which is simply about educating. I think we need to join forces. We need to work closer. We need to be able to have ultimately a message of not only helping and advising people to become the best version of themselves, but also to address the, the, the issues that the world has. I mean, you can see behind me, and this is a campaign behind the expo, is a best you, a better world, because we believe in that. I really, really believe in that. I think that authors, leaders in the industry, people that are out there inspiring and changing the world, you know, we really need to hold a flag of change. And, and, and my job, if I see anything and, and kind of what, what am I trying to do? What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to educate those that are educating others to address these issues. So carry on teaching, carry on doing what you're doing, but make people aware that we have to deal with the issues of the world, you know, so kind of global warming, uh, slavery, you know, uh, injustice, uh, mental health and, and all these things. So, I mean, I, I think kind of why, why I do it is, is because I, I just believe that something like this is needed. I think kind of as we grow older, we get to understand how important it is to, you know, update our software and to improve our skills. And, and, and in this era, as I said, of kind of like more technology and more communication, there seems to be less communication and less empathy. And, and I think the, these opportunities of people meeting and engaging is, is, is the perfect situation to, to, to change that. And, um, and I believe when we get eight or 10,000 people together, you know, th there's a strong message. And, and for us, it's kind of, I'm really interested in seeing how we can reach more. So the live streaming, the recording of the talks, putting them out there to tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people in the, in the months and years to come is kind of what I'm really interested in as well. Hmm. Well, I think, I think the point is that, you know, when you, when people do start to do, um, to take a look at themselves in a deeper way and they start to, to explore the conversation of, you know, what, what else is possible and, you know, who am I, what's going to fulfill, what's my purpose, all these questions, then I think what happens is people begin to have this, this thing about wanting to be true to that, whatever they discover about themselves. And so the issues that, that need tackling in the world kind of get addressed inside of that. Those people wake up and go, what am I passionate about? Is this an area that I really want to do something about? And so they go and do something about that. So I think it's, this is kind of like the breeding ground, the awakening space, as it were, to, to have people become more and more present to what it is that they are here for uh, or that would fulfill them. No, you're, you're absolutely right. And funny enough, this fits in perfectly with, well, I, I'm, I'm not taking this uh, as a plug, but uh, um, I, uh, what I'm saying is, is that the title of my talk is called The Question. Uh, and, and, and ultimately, the title is all based on that, is what are you here for? What is it ultimately you're here for? Um, because, you know, we all, tend to, we all know that we are mortal, but we tend to believe that we're immortal. So whatever it is that we think that we want to do or whatever it is that we want to change, we always think we've got a tomorrow. We always think we've got a next week or a next year. You know what? We don't know that. So kind of ultimately, and I, I love that. I've read that and I've shared that quite several times. You know, I interviewed someone and I thought it was fantastic writing two eulogies in your life. One, where is you carry on doing what you're doing now and, and, and where would you end and what would that mean? And, and the other would be kind of um, 
the eulogy of that ideal you, of that best you, of, of you know what, there's no limits. I can do and achieve anything. Once you write those two down and you actually read them, they should be powerful enough to drive you to go out and do whatever it is that you want to do. And, What's on and, yours? Well, mine is, mine is, is kind of like, you know, I, I think that is it. I think mine is, is this, is, is ultimately to really create a legacy. I mean, my legacy is my family. You know, I've got three amazing kids and they are, I mean, you know, they're the most charismatic, loving and intelligent kids. And I'm very proud of that. But personally, I, I just want to, I just want to know that, that I, I started all over again. And we were asking what my background was. Well, my background was real estate. I started in real estate. I lost my money twice and I started all over again at the age of 40. And, and, here, and here I am 10 years later doing something completely different and, and really, you know, pushing, pushing as much as I can. So my legacy will hopefully be is that, you know what, I, I really helped through my, my platforms and everything that I do to create and provide, you know, connection between those that are seeking inspiration and those that are sharing that, that those inspiring ideas. That, that's, that's all I want to do. And, and, and ultimately, make a difference, man. I mean, you know, uh, I think kind of what I share in my talk as well is there's 107 billion since the beginning of time. They reckon there's around 7 billion now, 11 billion by 2050. And, and my question is out of 107 billion, how many of those have really made a difference? And don't get me wrong, not everyone's going to be a conqueror. Not everyone's going to be like a, you know, uh, an astronaut, but, but we can all make a difference. Uh, and again, it's the whole thing. Not, not one person can do everything, but everyone can do something. And I think that's kind of what we've all got to think about. Mm. So, you know, as an entrepreneur, you've, you said you've lost all your money twice and then you've started and, and, and you've risen and now you're on your third journey. So one of the things about real entrepreneurs is that um, they have to really tackle. We ha it's like you have to tackle the negativity that other people throw at you because there are, you have a vision, your vision. It's your vision. Not everybody will see it. Not everybody will get it. Not every, even if they do, they may not necessarily think it's a good idea. So how have you dealt with the negativity? There are two types of negativity. There's one that comes at you from outside, from people you care about. And then there's the one that comes from within. So let's talk about the first one first. How have, what ways have you found effective in dealing with that? For other people, you mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I love the, I mean, I love one of the hashtags that I use a lot is hashtag no negativity. I don't allow any negativity in my life. I mean, and, and, I, and I mean this kind of like, you know, look, I'm always going to listen to the news. I'm always going to hear some negative person. Sometimes I can be critical or negative, but I don't allow any negativity in my life. You know, so kind of if someone's negative or, or, or giving me kind of bad ideas of what I can or can't do or can't achieve, I simply disconnect from them. I'm just not interested. I do not want to know. Why? Because they just don't bring anything positive to my life. And I know that sometimes, unfortunately, we have loved ones and friends and families and we can't swap them and change them, but we can choose how long we want to spend with them, you know? And uh, if instead of like once a month, it's, you know, once every three months or if it's, you know, so I choose no negativity and no negative people. I'm not interested in it. But don't you miss out sometimes when you, when you take that approach? And I, I get what you're saying. You know, you, you've got to sift. You've got to be discerning about who, who you give your time to and who you actually listen to. But sometimes um, there may be something valid that may keep you from making a grave you know, uh, mistake in, in, in something you're about to do, uh, not necessarily the whole vision, but maybe some step. Would that happen? Has that happened? Where you well, said, well, well, it has, but I mean, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't confuse constructive criticism or, 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 or you know, friendly advice to okay. negativity. You know, I mean, they're, they're just two completely different concepts. You know, if you're saying, look, you know what, I, I actually want to go and climb the Everest next year. And someone is saying to you, that's absolutely stupid. I mean, you know, seriously, what is wrong with you? You know, well, that's sorry, that is negativity. And, and, and if someone says to me, well, you know what, I have a friend of mine that's done it. And I'll tell you what, it's a six to nine month uh, training program. You know, 76% of people that have tried climbing is a died. You know, well, excuse me, that's good proper advice. So I, I, th I think we're all clever enough to be able to distinguish between what is, what is negative, uh, uh, negative uh, and constructive criticism, or at least I am. So, uh, but also, I mean, I, you, you must as well, because you know, you're very spiritual, but oh my God, we feel it, you know, and I, I'm not one that reads auras and all that, but, if I have someone that's coming into the, walking into the room and their negativity and they're negative, I can feel it. I mean, you, when, when someone's in a really bad mood and they're coming through the door, you can feel it. Yeah. So, you know, you can feel negativity yeah. too. So, um, sure. 
got that. <laughs> Very good. And so, um, uh, you know, what I'm guessing one of the things that will ha have happened in the entrepreneurial journey is you will have found what is your biggest nemesis within yourself. Have you? Have you found the, the one thing or a couple of things that really have a uh, kind of like your downfall and have you learned to, to, to deal with that? I don't know if I've learned to deal with it, to be honest. I think it's kind of one, one of my challenges is that my my vision, my, my vision and my pictures in my head are just so big and they just, they drive me so intensely uh, that I, you know, kind of, I, I tend to sometimes make the same mistakes of, of obviously, you know, not being entrepreneurial enough as far as making the decisions that need to be made in order to reduce costs, in order to save money, in order to kind of like, you know, um, try to tr try to succeed really, I suppose. But you know, so I've, but I've, I've every, I've been trained since I was little. Whatever I, I thought, whenever I've had um, some kind of adversity and I've had a bad day, my 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 nature is to simply get up the next morning, and with, with a fighting spirit. You know, that, that's kind of it. So I just, I just don't allow anything to draw me back. So if it, if it's revenue that that is my issue, then I have to find ways of creating more revenue. We always can find ways. So it's down to the questions. And that's kind of what I talk about, which is the quality of your life is based on the quality of the questions you ask yourself. Mm. So if you ask yourself the right questions, how can I get out of this situation? How can I create, you know, different revenue streams? How can I work with that person? Or, or how can I achieve this goal of doing this, this and that? Your head will start finding solutions and start finding ways. If I start focusing on what is negative, oh, oh my God, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, if I wouldn't have done that. Again, this is things of the past. There's nothing I can deal with. I just got to focus on the present and the future. Awesome. So, um, okay. So really being focused, I think focus, determination, and being very discerning in the internal dialogue that you allow yourself to engage in is what I'm hearing you say, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's it. Yeah. Internal dialogue is everything. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm NLP trained. So if, if I've learned anything with, with, with NLP has been a very powerful tool to help me think better, to be wiser, and to be aware of my internal dialogue and obviously the pictures that I make in my head to make sure that they're ones that drive me. So kind of like when I, when I started all this, I knew I wanted to do big events. I always knew I wanted to run expos. I knew I wanted to do it all over the world. So this is something that's simply, you know, just manifesting itself now, but it's something that I had in my head for a long, long time. But isn't that the case then? You know, when we, when we talk about a vision, I think what I found is people give up too early. So they see something that really inspires them, but it, the, the gap from where they are to where that vision, take, you know, that what they see that inspires them is, is quite big, so big, they can't see the steps in between. And a lot of people just give up in that. And they don't realize that actually, from inception, to, like you mentioned 10 years just now, you saw this 10 years ago, you wanted to do this for ages, but it's only really three years ago that you started the best you, right? Yeah, that was the yeah, first one that five you, years ago. The Expo it does take time, right? To come to come together and to come to fruition. It does, it does. I mean, um, it's something I always say. Think, I always say things take time. I mean, I love that saying that when, when we're younger, we, we, we turn fires on. And when we're older, we're, we're, the, you know, we're the firemen who turn the fires off. So it, it, it takes time. I suppose it comes with maturity. But, but, I, but I will say this is that a lot of people give up too quickly. And, and, and also they, they simply aren't prepared you know, for the work that, that is required to these things. You know? So a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to go to the gym. I sign up on January uh, the 1st. And then by February the 2nd, you know, I'll have a six pack and, and I'll look amazing. It doesn't work that way. And, 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 and it's the same with life. You know, you've got to put the time in and you've got to be resilient. You know, I, I'm a great believer that we all have that inner strength within us, but we have to find it. And, um, and, and there's two ways. You can either look at yourself as, as, as someone that is going to achieve their dreams and achieve everything that you want, or you're going to see yourself as someone that's given up, you know, that you're looking at everyone else achieving it. Uh, and, and I find a lot, I mean, you, you Smita, you know, you've got your books, you, your YouTube, I mean, you've got a background in business. I mean, you've worked very hard to where, to get where you are today. You know, it's taken you a long, long time to build you to, to become who you are now. Um, but, but I, I find a lot of people that are, again, are in this industry of, of trying to help and inspire others who have this vision. They're very good at what they do but they don't take the necessary steps. They don't take action. You know, you've got to put yourself out there. You, you know what it's like. You, you know, you've got, to, you've got to push your limits. And, and, and kind of when, again, some of friends of mine asked me, he says, why would you do one event after the other? And I said, I don't know. 
Um, but again, it's just, I think we have to push the limits. We yeah. have to find what we're capable of doing and not doing. And you know what? And I, and I, and I know that sometimes in different countries, they see these things as, as fa I never see anything as failure. If I know I've given everything my 100%, nothing is failure. Because anyone that tells me, you know what, Bernardo, that wasn't that great. And I'll tell them with the greatest of respect, what is it you've done that you can really help me and educate me? Because you know what, maybe you have. And then if you have, I'm going to listen, I'm going to learn because I'm a learner. I want to learn. But if on the other hand, you've never taken any, any, any risks, you've never taken any action, you've never done anything like what I'm doing, then, you know, because I'm, I'm very careful of, I, 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 one of the things I really I'm very careful of, is of being judgmental. I don't want to judge anyone because I don't know what they've done. I don't know what their journey is. So I'm, I'm, quite, I'm quite careful in being critical with anyone mm -hmm. without really understanding kind of how they got to where they are today. So I will die trying. That's it. Yeah, awesome. That's su such good advice, su such a good philosophy, because when people talk about, for example, with marriage, I often hear people say, oh, it failed. And I think, well, how can a marriage fail? You know, it's a journey. It's two people trying to, to you know, it's a journey. What did you learn about yourself? That's the whole, the whole thing is, did you learn something? Has it made you a better person? Are you now in a better position to be able to have a, the, the kind of relationship that would absolutely you know, make you sing with joy every day, you know, is the, that's the point, right? Yeah, it is the point. It is, it is the point. Again, you've got to put the time in. You've got to put the work in. I mean, listen, I've been married for 29, 30 years uh, with my wife and, uh, and we're obviously completely different people to where we were then. But, you know, we, we put the time in. And when you've seen a lot of uh, other marriages, you know, who, oh, it didn't work out. Oh, we gave it two or three years. Oh, well, excuse me, you know. <laughs> but yeah. life is like that. You know, you've got to go all in. And, and I think kind of, I'm pretty ready to kind of like finish on this. It's never too late. It's never, ever too late. And there's a lot of people out there, oh, my mid thirties, I'm my mid forties, mid -40s. who cares? You know, the, the, the world is full of stories of people that have reinvented themselves and created amazing change, you know, uh, at any time, at any time in their thirties, forties, fifties, sixties, it's never too late. It's all in here. Absolutely. Totally, totally. So just, um, just, to, just to kind of complete on that, what ha what, who's been your inspiration? Like, have you, are, there, are there people that have, you know, qualities that they have or something that you think, oh, that's, that's really the way to go? Do you have any, anyone like that? I think, um, I, think um, I mean, obviously, look, Richard Bandler's had a big influence in me because you know, I did my training and then I, I train, I run all these courses here in London and I've attended or sat in pretty much all these courses for 10 years. You know, he's considered the best hypnotist in the world. You know, he uses a lot of unconscious language, but, and I've seen and learned from him how, he, how, he, how he's managed to create and help change, you know, and create change in people's minds for a long time. So, you know, he's obviously been a, a massive inspiration uh, as far as, uh, as a person that, you know, has helped millions of people. I think then, you know, I've worked with Sharon Lecter for a year. I, but no, I mean, you know, kind of, I'm, I'm always just really looking. At, I'm a modeler. I think one of the things obviously NLP teaches you is to model. Uh, and, and the concept of the best you is based on that. It's, it's studying successful people. So how, how do successful people achieve what they do? And that's what the best you is all about. It's presenting, inspiring speakers, authors, thinkers in front of those that are looking for that inspiration at, because... I always believe that there's always some or certain turning points in our life. And the turning point can come across from a talk. It can come from a quote. It can come from a book. It can come from meeting some person. We never know where that inspiration is going to come from. And, and we have to be open to, to, to inspiration. So I, if anything, I consider myself a model. I've modeled everyone. I mean, you know, obviously, Tony Robbins is amazing. Brendan Burchard. I mean, I'm working with Mastin Kip now, which I love. I'm a big Mastin fan of Mastin Kip. I mean... Uh, but also through the magazine, I've interviewed amazing people, Dave Asprey, Simon Sinek. I mean, his book, Start With A Why, had a big deep impact, impact on me, uh, you know, a few years ago. And it's part of my culture of the best you. So uh, many people, many people. I'm a modeler, so I'm always open to, to learning. Fantastic. Okay, so one, one last thing. You know, when people actually look at um, success, one of the things that's not said too much about is the fact that um, being successful largely depends on how you deal with stress, okay? And 
we kind of take stress as something like a separate, you know, separate thing. But what I've seen of when I've studied like people in corporations who do really, really well, people I've worked with, um, people who are there now is one of the things that really is required in a high stress, high pressure environment, high results focused environment is um, the ability to deal with stress on a daily, regular basis and really mastering that. What's your view on that? What do you do to deal with stress? Do you have like a regime? Do you do something like exercise or, or meditation? Yeah, well, I mean, for me, uh, I, I'm probably, um, I'm, I'm, I'm obviously an ambassador of, of, of learning and growing and evolving. And, and obviously, you know, I've, I've tasted and tried different things. There's lots of things that I really want to explore. I mean, I'm, I've meditated a little bit, not a lot. I, I, I've done a little bit of yoga, not a lot, but these are things that I'm really, I've got them on my bucket list of things that I really, was for me, I have to master everything. When I played squash, I have to master it. When I run motorbikes, I have to master it. I really, I really want to, I, I want to really learn how these things work. So, and, and I know these things will probably take years, but I'm prepared to put the years in. There isn't anything specific that I do, but what I do do is, is, is uh, like now, for example, for the last year, I've been exercising a lot. So it's important four or five times a week. I mean, now I've been doing some programs where for the last 25 weeks, I've been training every single day for 25 minutes. So, uh, exercise keeps my mind fresh. Um, uh, blow a bit of steam sometimes, you know, so I, I, I do enjoy a laugh and going out and have some drinks with some friends. At least you're going to do that once every two, three weeks because I work very hard as well. So I think kind of like having a bit of a laugh helps. Uh, reading helps me. Uh, reading. Uh, I, I mainly do audiobooks. But I, I, I thrive on stress. You know, I, I'm, I'm a bit, as I said, it's kind of like my nature is, is that the more work I have, the more challenging the, ta- the, 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 whatever the goal is or whatever it is that we're trying to achieve, the more focused I become and kind of the more driven I become. And, 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 and I just have, and I just look at, overlook everything with clarity. So I don't know, I'm, I'm a bit strange, I suppose, that, but I, I just thrive with, with stress. And, and sometimes when I take some time off, I, I then all of a sudden become ill. And, uh, <laughs> but no, I, I, I don't do anything in particular. And there's a lot more stuff that I like to do. I really would like to do more yoga. I'd like to do more meditation because I understand. You've got to come to my classes. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. Dynamic. My... No, listen, really. This Tell is me. more the dynamic stuff. This is not just, you know, people have this idea of yoga. Oh, it's so easy and so relaxing. Mm-mm. <laughs> it's not, no not the stuff that I do so really no but it, it's it's amazing it is so much about the mind you know the ability to to and it's about developing strength people think of yoga as something about flexibility it's more about strength and stamina and then flexibility anyway that was really nice great and good to hear about that and um well, Sunita, thank, thank, thank you so yeah. much all I wanted to do now is just simply share my screen with your permission with everyone's permission and what I'm going to do is just simply just share uh, the link. So for anyone that hasn't heard about the Best You Expo because they've been hiding in a cave somewhere in Afghanistan or Pakistan or, <laughs> or, or, or in the mountains of Russia, well, you know, I just want to say, hey, guys, where have you been? So the bestyouexpo.com, the largest personal development exhibition happening in Europe. And uh, if you find an excuse not to go, well, listen, hey, don't go. If, if, you, if you're looking for, you know, a meeting amazing, amazing people, this is it, thebestyouexpo.com. And then we've got both sites, UK, 16th, 17th of February, and the one in Long Beach in California. So if you go to the UK uh, here uh, under the show experience, you've got the floor plans. We've got something for everyone. And I know you did some yoga for us last year as well, didn't you? Uh, I did. Yeah. Well, this year we've got some fantastic yogis. We've got a, a beautiful uh, section. Uh, Lululemon's our partners here in the US, which we're yeah. delighted about. So I, I live in Lululemon. Do you? Yeah, yeah I do. <laughs> Great stuff. Well, we've got a better world. We've got mindfulness and well-being, life and work balance. We've got health and lifestyle. We've got passion to profit, empowering women, best for business. So these are all different workout rooms. And within these, you know, we've obviously got a big floor plan, seven and a half thousand square meters, nine seminar rooms, plus the auditorium. And then we've got an amazing lineup of speakers. And we've got this amazing lady that's actually just uh, coming in specifically uh, to the event. And from what I gather, she's doing some fantastic workshops in... um, and the best you expo and she's such in demand that we've actually asked her to do three talks oh it's mita joshi uh-huh. <laughs> so she's here and uh if you wanted to obviously just check you can see the times that she has her talks there they are uh that's the times there that's her uh stand and there's smita's video 
And, and there's some great exhibitors, you know, we, we've got Balance Magazine, we've got Psychologies, great partners, well to do, and, and we have some fantastic people involved in the expo. So we hope to see you there. Uh, it's very affordable. If you've been lucky enough to get a free ticket, well, that was great, it was, it was free. If not, they're only like 10, 15 pounds, 10 pounds for one day, 15 pounds for two. Uh, but no, we've got an amazing, we've got an amazing lineup of all sorts of great experts. Uh, and we really look forward to seeing you there. So, Smita, thank you so much. This was great. You know what? Uh, normally, I'm always the one that gets to ask all the questions and stuff like that, but you managed to squeeze some good stuff out of me there. So, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. well, done. well done. Fantastic. I'll see you soon then, Bernardo. Thank you very I'll see much. You soon. Thank you so much for sharing. Take care. All the best. Bye. Bye.